Welcome back to part two of this tutorial showing you how to create a piece of work in the style of Gilbert and George. And now it's time to start adding the extra elements around my portrait. And these could be anything you like, whether it be political or amusing or whatever you like. Um, I've decided to go for the ingredients of a full English breakfast. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is grab the arrow tool and just shrink myself down so I've got more of a background to work with. You'll see that this kind of means my shoulders end, but don't worry, I'm going to be covering those with elements, um, so it won't matter in the long run. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is worry about my background, and I couldn't think of anything better than texture to go with an English breakfast theme than beans, so I found a picture of beans and um, I'm control seeing and control Ving them into my picture to copy and paste them in and resizing, pressing shift so that they stay the same shape without squashing or stretching. Uh, that does mean that I need to zoom out though, so I'm zooming out so that I can Pull them right the way across. Okay. There it is. Right. So that's my background. And dragging that below my portrait. There we go. Right. Now, as with everything in the Gilbert and George piece, I'm not leaving them the colour that they normally are, though. So... Same as usual, image adjustments, black and white, clicking OK, and then going image adjustments, brightness and contrast, just to up the contrast. And oh, I'll leave the brightness as it is, click OK. And then I'm going to create a new layer and make sure that gets dragged underneath the beans. Choose my color. In this case, a kind of light turquoisey blue. Click OK. And I'm going to use the paint bucket to fill the whole of the layer underneath the beans. There we go. And click back onto the beans and go to the drop down menu above and scroll down until I find the best effect. And that is my background done. OK, now I'm going to start thinking about the elements that are surrounding me. I found a nice picture of a fried egg. I searched fried egg PNG, so I found one with an empty background. And I've selected the egg, and now I'm pressing Control c to copy and Control v to paste it into my project. And I'm going to resize it, spin it round so I get the edge that I like. and put it down into the corner and you see it covers over where my shoulder kind of didn't go to the edge of the page okay and then same with everything else image adjustments black and white okay um, brightness and contrast in this instance i'm going to be bringing the brightness down as well make sure i've got some shadow on that yoke Click OK, and then as with everything else, creating a new layer, dragging that new layer underneath my egg, magic wanding on the egg layer, then going to select inverts, and that's chosen just the egg, and I'm going to do my egg yellow, click OK, go to my empty layer, and the paint bucket tool and fill the mask on that empty layer and then as always clicking back onto the egg layer going to the drop down menu and scrolling down till I get to the best effect okay um, I also have the yolk though on the uh, egg so rather than doing a whole the whole process again what I'm going to do is grab the ellipse select and I'm just going to go round the yolk on the yellow 
fill layer, select orange, click OK, and making sure I'm on that layer, I'm just going to fill the mask, and that puts the whole of the egg color onto the same layer. OK, then I'm going to select both of those layers, right click, merge layer, and it merges those two layers together, at which point I can double click, click on stroke, and the same settings will already be there, so I can just click OK, and that puts the outline around my egg as well. OK, now onto my next item, and in this case, delicious bacon. And same as before, I found a nice image without a background, bacon PNG. And control C, control V, and that pastes the bacon into the project. I'm just going to spin it around, resize it, and put it into the other corner. Again, I'm covering over my shoulder, so it doesn't look like my shoulder weirdly just ends in nothing. And it nicely surrounds me. And same as all the other elements, image adjustments, black and white, OK. Turn it black and white, image adjustments, brightness and contrast, whip up the contrast, click OK, and same again, new layer, drag the new layer underneath, go back to the bacon layer, click the magic wand tool, which selects everything but, so I then go to select inverse, and it selects the bacon for me and I'll choose my color in this case a nice vibrant green click OK and then as always making sure I am on the empty layer I click fill and it fills the green into the mask and then click back onto the bacon go to the drop down menu Scroll down to the best effect and merge the two layers together. Right click, merge layers and double click. Go to stroke and click OK. And that is the bacon done. Now I'm not going to bore you by doing every single object. What I'll do is I'm going to cut away and then come back once they're all done. And here you are. You join me again with all the objects in. Now I'm going to be adding a grid, a lot like Gilbert and George have in their work. So I found a grid PNG, so it was transparent. I have selected it, Control c Control v it's quite small. But I can resize that up to the edges. down to the other edge and that's it and that's my grid and the last thing I'm going to show you is how to add some text to your image so we go to the T drag a text box on and then click in and I'm going to type breakfast so capital letters so keeping the caps lock on I'm then going to use the arrow tool just to resize that a little bit. Make it a touch bigger. And just move it into a more central position. Okay. Right. And then rather than leave it as is, I'm going to rasterize that which does mean that I won't be able to change the text anymore, so I have to make sure that I've got the text right. I'm then going to double click and put a stroke onto it, but this time my stroke's going to be white. So I'm going to change the colour to white. And make it a touch bigger, I think. And click OK. 
and then I'm going to rasterize again but rasterize layer style and that's going to then set the white as a permanent feature which means then I can stroke again but this time with a smaller stroke and with black okay so I'll do the black first and then I think 15 pixels is going to do for this one click OK and that is my finished piece in the style of Gilbert and George and that's the end of this tutorial I hope you find it useful